We're going. Awesome. We're live. I say were. It's just me. I'm very lonely. Let's have a look at something I'm writing today then um, to see if we can add some funnies to it. Uh, this is something I'm going to put on my uh, magician blog and uh, also social media posts, stuff like that. Now, in the past, obviously, I've done this for other people, but um, it, it's quite handy to see the actual process of, of trying to add funny things into a basic blog post in action. And also, you might also get to see my awesome, awesome, I'm being sarcastic, awesome Canva-related skills, depending on how we go with this. So, the general idea for this blog post was... Um, to give people the idea that if you're stuck for a wedding present gift, why not book a magician? What better gift is there than giving somebody in a cheap suit doing card tricks? Um, I should mention that somewhere in there, actually. But it's more about the idea that you can give you know, a, a bride and groom the experience of having a relaxed period after their ceremony so they can relax with their friends while somebody else looks after their guests and they don't feel the pressure to play host. So let's have a quick work through this blog post. I've done, uh, I'll tell you now, I have done a few funny things in it somewhere along the way. Um, I'll explain these as we go. I'm trying to spend more time writing, but I also don't have loads of time. So it's kind of the bind I'm in. I kind of, a lot of my blog posts, I try and write something once a day. Something that I genuinely think will be useful to people depending on whether they're planning a corporate event, or in this case, getting married. But I don't have so much time that I can perfectly craft it, so I'm hoping it's okay. So, stuck for a wedding present idea. Unless you're one of those super organised people that can't do her weekly shop without a clipboard and Bluetooth-enabled headset mic, you may find yourself in the position of being stuck to buy the perfect wedding gift. I can probably build up a bit more sense of urgency in there, like you suddenly find yourself about to set off and... You've got to buy a gift. Now the next bit is something I've recently started doing. And it's an aside. It's sorry, I just cracked my watch on my desk. It's it's an aside, really. And the idea where I got this from is TV monologues. And it's an act out. We talk about this in the funny business framework. It's an act out of the idea. So in this case, the idea is you may find yourself in the position of being stuck by the perfect wedding gift. And I thought, just to break up the tempo, it'd be good to have a quote from somebody. Now, you can imagine this in in italics. In fact, you don't have to now because I've just done it. I'm bold. So, you imagine a monologue of somebody acting this out. Hang on, let me get this straight. Not only do I have to get up early, on a Saturday... I have to get my entire family in the same car while wearing my suit. And then I have to drive halfway across the country to meet people I wouldn't want to spend time with, even if they came to my house with a cheque for £1 million. And I have to buy them a present. They should be buying me a present. I should get a medal for this. So it's that kind of attitude that I want to have in that. And it's it's an aside. It's, it's a quote. It's an act out of what's going on. Because that really is the truth about wedding. You know... This is the weird thing about weddings, you know, you look at the guest list, and this isn't a guest list that would be invited to any other single event before in your life. Yet we get all these random people, put them together for a wedding and think that things are going to be okay, or think that guests will, you know, love it. Where in fact the opposite is, is true, you know, it, it's a ball ache. If you've got a family, getting to a, a wedding on the other side of the country is, you know, there are... Military excursions that are easier to plan than that. So that was an idea I had. I just thought I'd pop that in there to break up the tone and also get a little bit of humour in. I may edit that. I think I'm going to get that, edit it down a bit. And I might change the check for £1 million bit. But the idea is there that just to kind of break it up. So fear not, because I've got your back. <laughs> I'm about to get your back up. So... Here's a truth. While other wedding guests are working their way through the happy couple's wedding list, desperately searching for something cheap, but not too cheap, hello, tea towel set. You can give them something better. Not just a thing, but an experience. So this is where I'm kind of introducing the idea. And again, this is, uh, isn't going to be a massive post because I'm trying to post these natively into 
Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. But LinkedIn has got a miserly amount of characters. I think it's 1,200 or 1,300. So, um, you know, it's almost like for sale, car. LinkedIn has such a miserly amount that often what I do is post it as an article and then share it as a post. Because I've said this before, when you add humour, you're adding something in. It takes characters, it takes space, it takes ellipses, it takes fonts. So I don't really want to scrimp on that, not even for LinkedIn. So this is the bit I put over. So while other wedding guests are working their way through the happy couple's wedding list, um, I think I put wedding in there twice for an SEO reason. I might take it out. Desperately searching for something cheap but not too cheap. Hello, tea towel set. You can give them something better, not just a thing, but an experience. Which is true. So even though the article is trying to be funny, I'm trying to convey the idea that, you know what, buying your wedding couple an experience of being relaxed on their day is a good thing. So let's do a play on words with the experience bit, but an experience. And unlike that experience you had in Prague on the Stab Weekend, this one won't haunt you forever and require frequent visits to your GP. That's about as rude as I'm going to get with that. Um, I may change that, though, because... I don't know. We'll leave it there. I overthink these things far too much. If you've got any better gags for experience, I'd, I'd love to hear them. So give the happy couple the gift of being able to relax after the ceremony and, and listen as their guests laugh and have a great time at their own wedding. Uh, that could be tightened up a bit. Um, yes, that's right. I'm using a very thinly veiled social media post suggesting you buy the bride and groom a wedding entertainer such as me. In fact, let's do that. Such as me. Hint, hint. As a sly and manipulative marking tool. Booking an entertainer for the happy couple, whether it be a caricaturist, harpist, juggler, or a proper form of entertainment, such as wedding magician, is a gift the wedding couple will remember forever. Or until they hit the free bar after the meal. So again, just um, very simple jokes on there. Taking the mickey out of other weather wedding entertainers, or a proper form of entertainment. In fact, I can put that in capitals. If Google will let me. There we go. Proper form of wedding. Uh, no. So a proper form of entertainment such as a wedding magician is the gift the wedding couple will remember forever or until they hit the free bar after the meal. The best part is that if you can't afford the extortionate fees entertainers charge on your own, you can club together with other wedding guests who are also regretting leaving the present buying until the only thing left on the wedding list is matching his and her Lamborghinis. Win-win. So that's basically the point. That's basically the post I'm going to go with. Like I said, there's a few things I may change. Um, we'll go to the image in a sec, so I won't post it yet. So the check for £1 million is something uh, a bit vague. I'd rather go for something a bit more specific, so I'll have to do that. Hello, tea towel set, that's okay. The experience thing is something I could work on a bit, but I don't want to spend too much time on it because the main point is there. And yeah, so we've got a few obvious obvious gags in there. And and it's just spotting what, what you've mentioned. So this is this is a new one, and this is this bit here is is something you'll see a lot of monologues. So for example, like if you watch uh, last week tonight with John Oliver, you'll see him do a lot of that act outs where he kind of goes off to the side and yells, "Oh, are you really? Yes, yes, you are. Oh, excellent. Well, why do you do that? That kind of thing." And I, th and I think it's good to look for act out opportunities in your writing because it breaks it up a bit. Now, obviously, on Facebook and wherever, I'm not going to be able to put it in bold or italics, but in my blog, I will be because I own my blog. Um, but it's a great way of breaking up the process and, and calling something out and, and creating an act out. So have a go at that. Have a go at that. So when you find yourself coming up with an idea in a blog post or you make a point or something, uh, you want to question something, have a go at acting something out. And don't just go straight for writing it down. Actually act it out. Sit there. So, you know... You know, for example, if let's pick something else and do this. Um, let's go with the experience. So let's create an act out around the experience. So 
Unlike that experience you had in Prague on the Stag Weekend, this one won't haunt you forever and require frequent visits to your GP. And then you could go into the act out of, yes, I know the cream's got to be applied every three hours. I've been doing it. It still itches. And what is those things moving inside my pubic hair? Come on. Can you just shave them? This took a weird turn very quickly. Um, I'm very glad I didn't do the act out there, to be honest. That's the idea. And you can do this at any point in your blog. And uh, when you're writing words, just create a bit of an act out and, and go off on one. Even if you don't use it, it might give you an idea that you can use for something else. So, for example, this. This act out here really cements the idea that for a family, going to a wedding isn't a small ask. You're not just saying, can you reach over there and pass me a coaster? You're getting your entire family together, putting them in the car, keeping them tidy, remembering everything, driving across the, across the country, all while wearing a suit, and, and going to somewhere that you're not necessarily looking forward to going to. This is a big ask of people. So I think there's probably a future blog post there for how to get people to come to your wedding. Because I know a lot of brides worry about RSVPs. Going to a wedding is a daunting thing. So let's let's. There's a good blog post in 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 convincing people to go to your wedding. So have a go at that and do that, and uh, try and create an act out in your blog post. Even if it doesn't give you something funny you can put in the blog post, it will give you something to play with. And that is probably it for that. So let's let's go to Canva. No, felt like it should be a bit more um, meaningful than anything else. So I need to create an image for Canva for this. And again, actually, you know what? That that would be awesome. That would be a great image. So let me show you what I do with Canva. I'm, I'm sorry. I should preface this with I'm terrible at design. I'm, I've got a really bad eye for colours styles and uh, things like that, as you're about to see. So let's have a look at the few things I... So this is very much the style of the kind of posts I make. So this is one I made um, a few weeks back when I was trying to answer the question, why do... Why do... Why people should pay for a wedding musician to do tricks? Why should you pay for a professional? rather than, you know, your nephew. And the point was that, you know, uh, you need life experience dealing with people. When you pay for a magician, you're paying for somebody to go around and represent you at an event. Eight-year-old granddads, seven-year-old kids, they all get the same treatment. They all get the ability to see a magic trick, but you need to present it differently for each one. So um, this was the post I made for that. Really simple. I just basically find a funny photo, put a quote on it, and put it between two things. This is my formula for Canva. It's probably quite terrible. So let's have a go at this then. So, uh, which is one I know? Oh yeah, social media post that will do nicely. So this is what we're working with. We're talking about wedding present ideas. And I, I, the more I think about it, the more I think this would be a really good thing to do. Um, yeah, I think this is far too many words because I, I know people who know about images will say that you shouldn't have many words in the image or it should be bright, uh, brief and concise. Um, so, but I'm going to see how that works. I think that would be really good. And it's okay if I use it in the blog post. So I need a picture. So let's go here. Um, what I'm looking for is an angry man. Angry man in a suit. If anything pops up with my search history, I apologize. I just realized, of course, uh, the other day I, I searched for RedTube um, for, for the basis of a joke. And I've just realized that might pop up. So I'm just getting that out there now, just in case. So I see something, let's see, see what we can find. So I'm looking for an angry man. Let's go for a lot. I prefer getting a large image because I think they're, 
you can scale them a bit better. So for me, I want to find somebody who's really angry. Not just like a little bit angry, but like almost like American Psycho angry. Let's see. Is it more like that? Let's see what we can find. They're all stock photos. Let's see what we can find on. Let's go to a well known website where you can get some free images. Because God only knows I don't have to pay. Angry. Be a picture of me, I think. I like that. Right. See, a kid could be a really... That's lovely. That could be my new Tinder profile pic. That's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of what would have the most comedic effect. I think maybe a kid. That could be quite good. But I don't think it would be... I don't think a kid would have the right meaning because they would never say that. So... Um, Let's see, let's see, what else have we got? <laughs> I've used that one before, I like it. I don't know what it is about this picture, I might use it again. I used it in a different group. Um, I, I just, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. That's, I'm gonna use it. I just, I just like the fact that, I have no idea what context that would be in. He's out in the woods, Wearing a jacket, and um, yeah, let's let's use this. Oh, hello. Let's save it as Angry Man. That will do. Is it saved? Awesome. Right, let's go to Canva. Diddly -diddly -diddly. Yeah, I'm, I'm very bad at um, doing images. But, I think it's one of those things. See, look at these weird things I have in my history. Got Chuck Norris, that woman on the phone, man with the drill. These are the kind of things that when I die, people are going to have to remove quite quickly. Yeah, cool. Let's see what Mr. Angry Man can do. I'm about to get a speech bubble in. I'm going to have to use one side. Um, like the, the, let's, let's pick a colour for the background, then we're done. So this is, like I say, I'm really crap at design. But the thing I'm looking for here is something that's, something that, um, will make people stop and go, oh! And then I'm looking for the second reaction of, oh, that's quite funny. So, I like that colour. Let's do... kind of goes against his anger, though. Maybe I should... Um, maybe I should use red. Would red be better? It's anger. I don't like that. Let's go with that. Let's go with the... Dark bluish. Maybe, I don't know. See, in magic, there's a principle of colour, sound, and movement. You can stop a crowd with colour, sound, and movement. And I imagine the same thing works with the images. Although, again, I have no idea what I'm on about. Let's see. So let's create a bit of an image with this. Right, that will do. So I've got a space there that I can put some words. No, if I do that though, obviously. And I normally put my name at the bottom. My daughter told me to do that so that people don't steal my stuff, although nobody is ever interested in stealing my stuff. Let's get my website in there. Can't see if I've misspelled it yet until I go down. No! Boom! 
let's make it a bit smaller. Don't know why I'm singing. Get it in the center, that's fine. So this is the real benefit of doing this this act out in here. Um, you never know where you're going to use it. You know, if you were explaining that to somebody, you might use that in a conference. That, I mean, that would be brilliant in a actual stand-up comedy if you're talking about a wedding. Because that is the truth. As, to get your entire family to go to a wedding, you think the hardest part is organising the wedding? The hardest part is getting your three-year-old ready at 7am. Uh, um, you know, when you're going out in a car across the country. So let's um, let's see what we can do with this. Bit more room. So let's come up with... So what I normally do is I just normally put a headline at the top which is where most headlines go, although in images they can go all over the place. But let's create something that is a bit interesting. So, you forgot... For or got... Forgot to buy a wedding present. I think that's not going to need work. But again, like the words, I could spend so long, you know, if I, part of the thing of recording this helps me keep me accountable, because I'm so terrible at, I'll, I'll spend ages faffing around, it's just not relevant at all. I do this every single day, so, canvas being an ass, yay. So, you forgot to buy a wedding present. Dot, dot, dot. Let's see if we can fit that in there. So you forgot to buy a wedding present. And again, I feel that I should inform you that my uh, canvas skills are relatively appalling. But here's the thing, right? Here's the thing about this, right? And this applies to any kind of comedy. Um, I could faff around with this and wait for it to be perfect. Or I could just get on, have a go, push it out to the world, and see how it makes me and everybody else feel. That is it. And that's true with so many things, right? I could say, oh, I could, I could, I could do some research on which colours are best to have as a header. Or... You know, I could work out which font is better as a type, or, you know, I could make it bold, I could stress one word over another, or I could try different headlines. And you go, right, there's a time for thought, but there's also a time to go, you know what, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm going to get a, a, enough to convey the idea. It's not clickbaity, it's not false. I'm not delivering, I'm not promising something I'm not going to deliver. Uh, I'm just doing it. And you go, right, I'll tweak it and see how I go and see what reactions it gets on the socials. Uh, so, so yeah, don't, don't be don't be hesitant about coming up with ideas for comedy and ideas for wordplay or puns or taglines or images. Just just go out and just go out and do it. Just go out and do it, launch it, see what happens. The worst somebody can say is, I don't really like that. And you go, fair enough. I'm not insulting anybody. So don't be afraid of pushing this kind of stuff out into the world. See, that isn't the perfect headline. And the weird thing is, with every kind of piece of writing you do, and even comedy to a certain extent, you're looking, f say, who's the target audience? What do I want to tell them? What do I want to come? Up what do I want them to come away thinking or feeling after this? Right? And this maybe isn't a great idea because maybe it could be argued that the target audience for this is a bride and groom. And maybe what I want them to do is forward it to their friends or to give the uh, friends the idea that there are other gifts you can buy that they would appreciate. So a bride and groom might read this and go, oh, we really would like a harpist or a juggler or if they've got a you know, really good sense of style and taste, a magician. And maybe they will forward this to their friends and say, oh, if anybody wants to get me a magician, that would be awesome. And maybe it'll be useful. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But it's also for... a um, it may come across the, you know, it may come across the eye point of, you know, people who are going to a wedding. So, yeah. So, 
let's see what we can do with this. So I'm not entirely happy with that. I think that's a bit too small. So I want to have a bit more room up there for this. Just a bit more. Not that more. <laughs> See, I'm getting into dangerous territory now. I'm getting into the point where I start fiddling between font sizes. And, you know, it's just not relevant. So if you got to buy a wedding present, awesome. This guy doesn't look like a wedding guest. So this is what I tend to use. I tend to use one of these. I was looking on Canva for ages for a speech bubble. Because I tend to use them a lot. I probably overuse them, to be honest. But uh, I quite like it. I'm not sure my audience does. But I think it's a really good way to get across certain things. So I put it there. So now it looks like he's speaking. Genius. White on white. So. Oh, no, that one. But obviously, the other skill is writing this in a way that doesn't take up too much room. Because you don't, you just can't cram loads of words in there. So what I'll probably do is copy this across. I'm going to copy this across and then just edit it as I go. So we'll use it as a subheading. So 21, I think, seems to be the right amount of size for this. So let's get it in with the parameters so we know what we're doing. So we're just going to copy this across, and then when it's in, it'll be too much. Yep. And see what we can do. So let me get this straight. I have to get up. No, I'm gonna... Let me get this straight. Not only do I have to get up early on a Saturday. Uh, on a Saturday. I have to drive halfway across the country. I'm wearing my suit. In fact, I can take a while. Wearing my suit. I think this is going to be too big. It's going to be too big, damn it. Maybe I can just reframe the entire thing. Let's just see. Let me get this straight. Not only do I have to get up early on a Saturday, I have to drive halfway across the country wearing my suit. I have to wear a suit. Let's let's change that a bit. I have to wear a suit, drive halfway across the country and be social. Oh no, and buy a present. And And buy a present. So let's see. Let's lower this down a bit. And buy a present. I think we can just move straight to the metal part. Let me get this straight. Not only do I have to get up early on a Saturday, 
I have to do both, so you drive off like I was and buy them a present. So I'll read this out in a second. I'll buy them a present. They should be buying me a present. Let's just see how this goes. Right. Okay. So this is the act out. Let me get this straight. Not only do I have to get up early on a Saturday, I have to wear a suit, drive halfway across the country, and buy them a present. They should be buying me a bloody present. Or a medal. Hmm, they should give me a medal, not alone a present. Hmm. Let's see. Right, let's just move this over. See, it's getting danger of getting too big now, which is which is fine. This is a really good example of humor adding stuff. Let's see. So if you got to buy a wedding present, let me get this straight. Not only do I have to try get up early on a Saturday. I don't even need. I don't need those uh, hyphens. On my day off. See, on my day off, that could be better. Not my day off. On my day off. Is that it? Not only do I have to get up early on my day off, I have to wear a suit, drive halfway across the country, and then, and. Will that go bold on its own? It will. They should be the ones buying me a present. Uh, I could probably stress that. They. Nope. Don't do hotkeys in Canva. My God. They should be the buying me a bloody present. They should be the ones buying me a present. They should be buying me. Yeah. Oh, I'm so annoyed. They should be buying me a bloody present. Right. I might leave it there. Just because it's annoying me now. Right, that'll do for now. So let me get this straight. Not only do I have to get up early on my day off, I have to wear a suit, drive halfway across the country, and buy them a present. There's a better reaction. They should be buying me a bloody present. I think that'll do. I may change it in a bit, but it's so much battering in my head now that um, I literally don't know what else to do. I think there's something else there, like a medal or Ronald Fine's trek, um, the cheek of it kind of thing. I, I may change it. And if I do, I'll post it in the group later. I'll give myself like five minutes to have a think about it. Um, <coughs> but I don't know how long I've been wittering on for. I apologise. So that's the idea. Just basically going through. If you So do try this. Act out. Act out in your blog posts. Act out in your writing. Act out in your images. Get a bit of mileage from it. Your reaction to something you write in your blog post. Use it as to kind of break up the speaking. And uh, let me know how you get on. Don't be afraid of trying these new things. Um, although do be afraid of you know trying to spend too bloody long coming up with the right words in a bloody Canva picture. Ah! Never mind. Anyway, I'm going to go get some lunch, and um, I'll let you know how I get on.